Thank you for joining us on another episode of Why Communication Matters. I'm Tavi. And I'm Sharon Jeet. And in this episode, we'll be talking you through how to pitch to journalists, some of the golden rules to bear in mind. Thank you. Yes, um, you've got a fantastic background. 25 years in journalism, 18 at the BBC. Tell us about your career. Yeah, I mean, gosh, when I started out, if anybody had told me I was going to spend a quarter of a century doing this, I would have been so shocked. But that's exactly what I've done. So 25 years in journalism. I started out in North America with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Mm -hmm. And it was really about timing because there was a huge story at the time that broke in the late 1990s. And it was the Asian financial crisis. Yeah. So there was so much interest in Asia. And of course, that's where I'm from. I'm from Singapore, right in the smack in the middle of Southeast Asia. So I was told at the time, if you go back to your country, you have loads of stories to tell us and we'll put you on air on the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation nationally in Canada. And I said, fine, I'll do that. Came home, told lots of stories about how the, the crisis was impacting real people. And it was just such a great introduction to this whole medium of broadcasting. Um, shortly after that, I uh, got poached to go to Tokyo with Bloomberg Television. Where, Fantastic. Of course, Financial news was really, there was so much interest in the early noughties and just so much going on with the internet bubble and Y2K and it was such an exciting time and I, I loved working in Tokyo and it was a really incredible setup uh, with Bloomberg Television. And then I came home to Singapore to join the BBC and 18 years with the BBC, lots of different stories, everything from Again, financial news, which has been my, my background as a financial journalist, but also really developing myself in big global and regional stories. So I did a lot of coverage out of London. I also worked out of different areas of uh, you know, breaking news where I get deployed to go to Sri Lanka to report on the Easter Sunday bombings or you know, multiple times to Hong Kong to cover those protests in the streets. So it was such an exciting time and I have to say I really, really enjoyed my time. Uh, being a journalist, but you know, it's always time to try new things. So Tavi, tell us about yourself because you've had an extraordinary career as well. What's your role at Red Hill? You, you run a team here, don't you? I do, yes. Um, I do run a team. I've got about 20 people on my team and um, I've been here for four and a half years, although I've been in the industry for 22, working in the UK and Europe and all around Southeast Asia. Um, it's a very, very busy and varied day to day. Um, I run education teams, sustainability, um, luxury and lifestyle, consumer and um, healthcare. Healthcare is very, very interesting and very important here in Singapore. Lots of startups and lots of interesting, incredible companies coming out of this red dot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely, at a time of a pandemic that yes. has really you know, destroyed yeah. lives and livelihoods all yeah. across the world, that is a real focus now. The media landscape is evolving at a rapid pace, um, and even more so we've seen in the pandemic. There's the proliferation of social media, news sites, fake news as well, um, and just everything going digital. It's, it's very, very fast these days, and we know that journalists work across many beats. Um, and they have very little time. In fact, in the Muckrack survey that the State of Journalism 2022, they stated that 80% of journalists do find their stories from pitches. But I know that with five PR people to every one journalist, we've got to cut through, we've got to be seen to be, you know, we've, we've got to be heard. What are some of the golden rules that we can use in our pitches to enable us to be heard and seen? Yeah, I mean, that's extraordinary. Five PR professionals to every journalist. I mean, it basically indicates, you know, just how devastating, uh, you know, things have been on the industry. There's been so many job cuts uh, within journalism itself. So it's a really, really tough time for journalists to continue to do their jobs because they are often overstretched. They're covering a number of feats. But yes, absolutely, a really good way to pitch to, to a, a time-strapped, tired journalist is often to read into the news. So make your pitch relate to what's going on in the news. Write the headline of your pitch like it's an actual news headline and write the content of your pitch like a news story. Because guess what? You'd be really helping make the day easier for a, a time-starved journalist by doing half the job for them. And they'd really appreciate you for it. So always read into the news, figure out what matters, 
try to make your pitch relate to that. So that's one crucial rule. Another one is something you mentioned as well, Tavi, building relationships. That is so crucial. So the next time you get a chance, take the journalist out for a, a meal, a coffee, a drink. Just try to spend time with them. Try to understand the kind of stories that appeal to, to that particular journalist. What kind of areas are they looking to cover? What would help them in terms of making their jobs easier? And of course, the next time you call with your pitch or you email, they are more likely to, of course, remember you because, hey, you guys had a great time catching up over a drink. And, you know, they're going to put the face to the pitch and they will give you a little bit more time. So relationships, and particularly here in Asia, they really do matter. And finally, and this is really interesting, it's also in that muck rack survey, offer exclusives. 79% of journalists will do a story if it's an exclusive. So the next time you've got a big CEO in town or a great speaker, offer it to your most valued journalist, the person who's got the widest circulation or the number of readerships uh, that's very high or you know the highest ratings on their programs. Offer it to that journalist because they will remember and they will thank you for it because it's an exclusive that makes them look good. So it's not just about the CEO or the speaker, it could be a really surprising piece of data that they have and they can use. So it makes their content much more valuable as well and you'd be doing them a massive favor. So those three crucial points have really helped and it certainly has helped me in my career when PR professionals have reached out to me and been able to do that. But what about you, Tavia? I mean, you've, you've been in this business for a very long time, 22 years, as you said. So tell me what's worked for you in terms of successfully pitching to uh, journalists. Good question. Um, Authenticity is my number one thing. If you have um, a resonant relationship with a journalist, if they know that you can bring them value, if you don't just take them rubbish, if you take a carefully crafted pitch, but you have that relationship and they know that whatever email you're sending them is gonna, is gonna work, that, that's really good. Um, I think having a good story to start with, if you haven't got a good story, advise the client not to pitch. Advise the client that this is not a story and we won't be taking it out. Um, I think as well, nailing your elevator pitch so that when you do get in a room with a journalist you can just go and you're not pussyfooting around and you're not kind of hedging around the story um, but also once you have piqued their interest and they want to get into a deeper conversation know your facts know your client know the story don't say oh, I'll have to get back to you because that's really awkward so once you have started on this journey of pitching you have to be prepared to go the whole way and you never know how much that's going to be um, I would also say understanding the media, understanding how they write, what they write, having researched their stories in the past and what kind of things you know piques their interest, but that will come from having a relationship with them as well, you'll know them. And finally, I think a little bit of luck sometimes as well. Yeah, excellent. Katie, what would be your three takeaways from this conversation, this great conversation we're having? Um, I liked what you said about writing the headline for the journalist, making it eye-catching, because we know that the, the volume of emails they, that journalists receive, I believe it's up 200, 300 a day of pitches. I remember those. <sighs> um, <laughs> so, you know, when they're, when they're scanning, when you're scanning, you, you need yours to pop out. So that's, that's something that's, that's really resonated with what you've said today. Um, the second thing you've said is, you know, writing it like a story, so writing it as a news hook. Um, the, I mean, we do need to catch the attention and we do, need, we do need that. We don't want to tell the journalists how to suck eggs, so I think it has to be peppered with data as well. Um, but that was, that was interesting for me. And the third thing you said about offering exclusives, that's brilliant, you know. Yes, obviously journalists want exclusives. If you've got something really meaty, really different, and that you want it to go to you know, a tier one publication, absolutely. No, I mean, there's the absolutely, I mean, exclusives are crucial. But I was really fascinated by what you said as well, because oftentimes, you know, having been the journalist for so long, I often think the PR professional, the relationships just with the journalist. But as you say, it's also with the client. Mm -hmm. So that's incredibly brave to stand up to your client to say, well, actually, that story is not going to work. So let's, you know, go back to the journalist at a different time to pitch that story. So, yes, it is a, a relationship that you've got to manage both with journalists, the media and your clients. That's and that right. is so crucial, isn't it? And I love the fact that, you know, the elevator pitch, absolutely. 
you know, as we've said, we don't have time. Uh, jobs are being lost in the industry. Uh, a lot of journalists are having to work several different beats at once. So when we have time with you, we want you to be really, really coherent in terms of what you're pitching and brief. Mm -hmm. So get your facts in there, know your story, know what you're pitching, the data, the statistics, and give it to us right away because that's what we need. And we'll say, yeah, that story is going to work for me or no, that's not a story that yeah. we want to do this time. So those sort of things are really, really crucial. And yeah, I mean, I think that was just incredible because it's also been eye opening for me what public relations professionals do like yourselves and the kind of work that you do to make sure that your client's happy and the media's happy at the same time. We hope you've learned something and taken away from today's video. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below on anything you'd like to know about pitching to journalists. And equally, please do ask any anything you'd like to know about communications. Well, I hope you took away a lot that was useful in this episode. You can stay tuned for more episodes of how to make communication matter. And we'll see you next time. Bye.